New South Wales Police and Strike Force Wessex have arrested 16 people related to the infamous Alamedine crime plan, including notorious rapper Ali Yunus also known as A Huncho, following a series of raids that started from 3 a.m. on 27 March 2024. They executed 18 warrants and seized three firearms, large quantities of drugs, knives, cars, luxury goods and $60,000 in cash. According to the authorities this was the tail end of the demon, and they believe that the infamous Alamedine crime clan's dial-a-dealer network has now been completely eliminated, dismantled and wiped off from the face of the country. Around 250 officers from Strike Force Wessex, established by the State Crime Command's Criminal Group Squad and the NSW Crime Commission targeted this major drug network following the shutdown of 26 drug-run phones, connected to more than 50,000 alleged users. According to authorities, the clan was operating from Sydney's southwest and has been orchestrating a comprehensive drug enterprise, encompassing everything from importation, to batching, and an efficient street-level distribution, yielding profits of a staggering million dollars per week. Police, the arrests were filmed by the NSW police and has been obtained by Grid Sparta on request. Footage showed various Alamedine clan members being dragged out of their homes, arrested and paraded to the police vans. The footage depicts several members of the Alamedine clan being forcefully removed from their residences and escorted to police vehicles. Dramatic scenes unfold at multiple locations, highlighting the arrests and the subsequent transfer into police custody. Among the videos captured, some individuals are shown being paraded in mere shorts, highlighting the swift, surprising and decisive measures taken against these criminal figures. One of those apprehended was the drill rapper Ali Yunus, also known as A Huncho, who was arrested at Meriden Apartments on George Street in Paramount. The Raptor unit was observed forcefully entering his apartment building with a sense of urgency. They swiftly moved through the premises, breached the door, and entered the apartment. Subsequently, the team emerged from the building, escorting the drill rapper out into public view. This dramatic display of law enforcement action left bystanders and members of the public watching in shock. Despite his blurred face in the video, he was easily identifiable by his proper 60 shin tattoo. Younes had become wary of being targeted by a rival gang and organized criminal factions, leading him to frequently change locations to avoid detection. He is currently in custody, awaiting questioning regarding an aggravated kidnapping in Granville on January 19, and alleged involvement in a criminal group. Police assert they possess substantial evidence indicating his principal role in the abduction. Thanks, buddy. Around eight weeks ago, reports surfaced detailing an incident where eight individuals, masked and armed, visited his residence. However, he was not present at the time. Since then he has been staying in hotels, apartments, and various other places as a precautionary measure. It is widely known that Huncho has maintained close associations with individuals under investigation in the Alamedine Syndicate. Younes has been at the center of Sydney's drill rap scene since his breakout track Lifestyle 100, in 2017. His rap videos with controversial lyrics have been criticized by the media and the police, for glorifying violence and gang life. NSW police previously warned him that his music promises of a lavish lifestyle which are being used by the gang to lure young men into a life of crime. In 2021, he surrendered to police after being on the run and was charged over an alleged assault at an amateur boxing match in November of that year. But after spending the majority of summer in custody, he was granted bail with strict conditions. He was required to pay a $50,000 surety to secure his release, and was bound by conditions that include a ban on associating with any key members of the Alamedine clan and his cousins namely Rafat, Hamdi and Rashad Alamedine. He was also subject to a 9 p.m. curfew. In April 2023, the rapper along with two associates, 
was charged for their involvement in a fight at a warehouse where one man was beaten with a pipe. The victim sustained a broken neck, fractured cheek, and cuts. However, shortly after the sentencing, the rapper, who received a community corrections order and a fine, quickly jetted off overseas. He shared a photo of himself seated in a business class seat on a plane with his Instagram followers. Sydney has been home to a deadly drug war largely centered on two high-profile crime clans, the Alamedines and the Hamzies, which were behind many of the 20 killings linked to organized crime since 2020. Strike Force Wessex was launched last April, after police allegedly discovered a major dial-a-dealer drug network while investigating four gangland murders. They included the brazen killing of 39-year-old Omar Zahed, gunned down in an Auburn gym in May 2022. His brother and Comanchero Sergeant Tarek Zahed, survived up to 10 bullet wounds in the same attack. In January last year police arrested another high-profile member of this crime family, Rashad Alamadine, after he was found hiding in his home attic, who ran a side hustle by the name of Charlie Service. Grid Sparta covered this news in a video which can be found in the Alamadine playlist of this channel. Following this we saw arrest of another high-ranking member of the clan Masood Zakaria, being arrested and in Bodrum, Turkey, he was later deported to Australia and is currently incarcerated in isolation, and waiting on a hearing date. As police cracked down on the dangerous underworld of the Alamadine crew, many members fled to Lebanon. Including their alleged leader of the Alamadines Rafat Alamadine, who is believed to be living in Lebanon since November 2022 when he left Sydney weeks after being cleared of assaulting an Uber driver. According to authorities, the Alamedines have been around for a long time and have been making up to $1 million per week profit, which is a significant amount of money, which drives this conflict, fuels the violence and fuels the antagonism between the groups. Following the operation, Deputy Commissioner David Hudson addressed the media, stating that this operation has eradicated what remained of the criminal network in Australia. In May 2022, we targeted this group through Strike Force Sugarcane, charging 41 people and forcing many others to flee overseas, Deputy Commissioner Hudson explained. Today's operation has effectively dismantled the remnants of their presence on our shores. Detective Superintendent Grant Taylor also acknowledged that the conflict between this criminal group and its rivals had been resolved due to these arrests. The rivalry between this criminal network and its adversaries stemmed from disputes over drugs and territorial control of the drug trade in specific areas of Sydney, Superintendent Taylor remarked. However, with these individuals now incarcerated and their means of communication disrupted, we anticipate that the conflict has been extinguished. If you're looking for more exciting and eye-catching regular bikey updates, don't hesitate, smash that subscribe button, spread the word rapidly, hit that like button, share your thoughts in the comments section. And for the true grid Spartans out there, consider sending a super thanks to show some love. It goes a long way in keeping us motivated and the channel thriving, as most of the videos on this channel are not monetized due to its crime-related content. Stay tuned, stay curious, stay awesome and take care. Wu-Tang